Ansley, so nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And you are, I am assuming, in your humble abode? I am, yes. Yes, I am. Where are you? I'm in Toronto right now, yeah. Bloor, oh. Ossington area, if you need a closer thing, yeah. I could just get up on my bike and like be where you are in 10 minutes. You could, you but could, we could, we could wave. Yeah, this is good. I was a little late for meeting you at our online rendezvous, and I'm sorry about that. I just totally got sucked into this other work vortex. Oh yeah. But oh, you are you're multitasking as well right now, right? I am. I'm always multitasking. Yeah. You just delivered your kid somewhere? Oh, I just got her from school not too long. It was their second day of grade five. Oh. Yeah. How is she doing? There's so much like, uh, it seems like, you know, we hear so much pressure from parents and like so scared about bringing their kids to school that I can only imagine what it must be like for the kids. We never really hear about from the kids. So how is she doing? Yeah. I mean, I, I am stressed. She is just super excited. Um, so far, so good. Her school is doing a really great outdoor learning thing. So, and I mean, we're two days into it. She comes back exhausted though. Like it's, it's a lot. I wow. Think, for them I, to be an exhausted child. I know. <laughs> when you say the outdoor schooling, it reminds me of like the old Greek toga wearing days. Maybe she could wear <laughs> yeah. a toga outside. I'll, I'll suggest it. I'll suggest it. Yeah. We'll see if that goes over. <laughs> Hansley, um, I'm so uh, impressed by, by you. Um, you own and operate your own record label. Um, what does that take? Um, I, it takes, I guess, just deciding to do it yourself if it's not working for you, the different models that are out there. And that's kind of been my experience. And I'm not alone as far as Indigenous musicians go. Um, we spend a lot of time, you know, talking about what we need from labels or what we would like and the support that we, you know, require. And it sort of gets swept aside and the plans put out in front of you instead. So it just sort of felt like this was the time to put something else out into the world that, you know, can slowly build and evolve to support a whole bunch of indigenous artists, hopefully. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it calls to mind, you know, I, I've talked with Jeremy Dutcher mm -hmm. and I see that Iskwe also represents herself. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremy's like, God, why would you even have a label? Yeah. He, he seems to have like, a, just like a website where like it, it goes for directly from Jeremy to his audience. Yeah. And I, I, I'm wondering, you know, like why does this make, the most business sense to you? See, for my perspective, uh, I'm, I'm on the same page as Jeremy, really. I feel that labels for a while have been, or our industry has had a lot of gatekeepers. The pandemic has really flattened the walls, so to speak. And now we have like gatekeepers trying to talk us into going through the gates when we could just walk around, you know, and do our own thing. So my goal with this label is to actually have it like a learning label for indigenous artists. So if they want to know what it's like to release something, um, I want to work with them so they really understand the process. So at the end of it, if they decide they want to just do it on their, on, their, on their own, they can go ahead and do that. If they like the community um, and the guidance and the support that a label can bring them, then great, we'll continue working together. So mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of the discussions these days around the industry are sort of like, what do we need and what, what can we get rid of? So on one hand, it's really an interesting time to be starting a label, but on the other hand, it's like, okay, maybe we can do something better from the ashes. You know, Maybe we can build something that actually aligns with what artists really need. So um, you sort of touched on another one of the pillars, the idea of inclusivity uh, that the, the Venus Fest is trying to bring about these dialogues. So when you're saying the other model of working for a labor that sometimes tries to push you through the gates that you don't want to necessarily walk through, can you say some examples of when record label mentality never worked for you? Yeah, this new album that I have that I've been working to release that's been put on hold from the pandemic and coming out in the spring now um, is very different. It's a story and I and I actually embedded a lot of Anishinaabe um, spiritual elements into it, medicinal elements, uh, traditional storylines into it. 
And so I have a responsibility to that material to make sure that it is out in the world in a good way. And so for me, that actually means not putting it up on a passive streaming environment. So I'm not putting my album up on Spotify. When you walk into the door of any record label in, in Canada and the United States and say that you're not putting your album up on Spotify, they say, thank you very much. And this is a really interesting idea at most and see you later. Um, so, uh, but still for me, the most important thing that I have as an artist is to protect and to um, look after these stories like, like we do. Uh, and that means being able to put it out in a way where it's, you know, it's taken care of. Yeah. How, how is the Spotify model not, not copacetic for sharing these, these cultural, cultural essentially um, secrets? Yeah, it's the passive listening side of it. The fact that an algorithm just kind of pops up a, a different playlist or selects different things, judging on tempos, and then quietly sneaks it into the background of your work life so that you continue to you know, distract yourself and keep working or whatever the case may be. And where I can't as an artist um, force people to sit down and actively deep listen to my album, I can make choices that would prevent someone from deep listening. And I feel like these streaming platforms, which really undervalue artists in a very real way um, on one hand, and they, I, I feel like they really undermine the value of music. It takes a lot of work to release something and to have it just sort of passively blending in with the background without people really listening. It's just, yeah. It's How not, do you engage active listening uh, when you put it out yourself? How are you able to like, kind of like, um, yeah. yeah, make sure that, or, or try your best to uh, encourage people along those lines? Yeah, I'm, I'm choosing a different approach with this one. So, and I'm pulling in artistic ideas and one of them is an off offline website. So the album would stream in essence on a website that requires you to log off your internet and to completely unplug in that way before you have access to the tracks to be able to listen to them. So it's my anti Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, your anti Spotify. Uh -huh. You mean, are, are you talking about your elder Spotify or actually your auntie? No, no, I mean, auntie is in against, yeah. Like oh, it's auntie in, against. I was, like, I was like, wait a minute, is yeah. she getting her aunt to like make a <laughs> website? <laughs> no, no, I got my cousin doing that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of in the family. You, oh, you yeah. put out your own music, your sister Leanne's, or uh, yes, yes, Leanne, yeah, yeah. Leanne. your sister Leanne's music. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like a very personal affair for you creativity the the label is called uh uh Gigi way. way yeah Gigi i'm gonna way. say i want to make sure that i'm saying Gigi way Gigi way Gigi way Gigi way Gigi way Gigi way is a anishinaabe word that means to sing or speak with a loud voice and i felt like that was really fitting um yeah, and I'm having I'm having a really good time hearing all the different pronunciations so far. <laughs> so it's so interesting that you know, um, as political systems crumble, and through this entire pandemic and you know the tumultuous times we live in, many interesting and important conversations are being had, and people are really having to like kind of let go mm -hmm. of a lot of their pre pre existing things that they were tapping into. And so it sounds like with you, you're really recognizing what works and what doesn't work for you in this industry. Yeah, I mean, we're trying. That's that's kind of all I think anyone can do is to just keep reinventing yourself. And as artists and musicians, that's what we do, right? It's this Pro constant, problem solvers. Yeah, yeah. We we are used to an industry that doesn't get, give us a lot, or or where we don't have a lot of support. Um, and I don't think that that's necessarily a good thing. Um, that we're used to that. We certainly could use more supports, uh, but it does make for this ability to just continue to be resilient and move forward. Can you give me a sense of like uh, the work going into making your own label? Like how much work is it? Cause you're, you're, you're not only having to be the creative force, but now mm -hmm. send this press release out, write this press release, do all this stuff. Like what is it, what does that, what does the day look like for you? Yeah, well, I mean, today I got up, I'm designing a website. Um, I have figured out a logo design. A lot of this I really enjoy doing on my own. And with the lockdown, I just had time that I could actually begin to materialize something into 
into a group. I've been writing modules on how to release songs, how to get your ISRC codes, all of the behind you're, the scenes stuff. You're, you're also I, sharing yeah. all your information. Yes, people. I really think that's important, uh, especially with indigenous musicians, because if you don't have access or understand the industry, you're more likely to get into situations where you're exploited. So I want to make sure that anybody who comes through Gajiwe's doors um, understands the exact, you know, transparency around what it takes to put out a song, the work involved, and here's how to do it. Wow, what a business person. And are you in the position now to not only release your family's music, but other people's music? That's the goal, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of testing things out on, my, my sister was the big guinea pig. She was the first release and I'm grateful for that. Um, and sort of we're testing the waters, building an audience. Um, and so I've got a few more projects lined up that are my own that sort of align with a new series, Amplify. And I wrote a song called Firewater that will come out as part of that. It um, seems like such a large conglomerate of creativity that's manifesting itself not only in the music, but actually the art of business. Oh, uh, yeah. I think we're all having to kind of uh, come up with creative ways to work this industry in a way that actually is different, you know, that values the, the time and energy that artists put in first and foremost. And it doesn't... Um, a lot of our pay structures are really lopsided. So the artist is actually getting the least amount and the industry behind them, you know, are it's, getting- It's a lot like, to, you yeah. know, Spotify, not only uh, is disrespectful to the material, but you're gonna get like cents, you yeah. know, like if you're less lucky. than a dollar, you know? <laughs> like it's 0. 0.0003 cents, I think. A, it's a ridiculous. It's, it's really intensely wrong. And then you have yeah. the leader of Spotify saying, you're you're groaning and groaning, musicians. Yeah, pump out more. We need Come more. On, go, go, you know? go. Yeah, I was talking <laughs> with uh, Jake from the Scissor Sisters. And ah. albeit, the Scissor Sisters came out at a time where you could still make money as a, as a musician, just before it tanked. Right. And he's like, I saw him in New Orleans and, and he said, Sakin, it's just like, yeah, you can actually hire services that you just send their, their stuff and they proliferate it for you. But it just seems more, more, much more like get, cut out the middle person. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. There's very, there's very uh, few things that you require. You can do everything yourself now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that might be the ideal situation for a lot of people. Um, the one area where I see labels being important is that they take sort of that burden of responsibility on the admin side off of the shoulders of the artist, right? Yes. So the artist can just do what we like to do, which is primarily create. And thank you know? God there are still some labels that love the artist oh, and yeah. many small ones that are willing to go to bat for the artist without you know, completely exploiting them. And so yeah. I, I guess like that's a good, great point you bring up. It's not just like, see you later, flip yeah. the bird, but like be mm -hmm. discerning about the label of which you wish to consolidate with. Yes, and ask questions and know what the, know what the payout is gonna be, know what the deal is really going to be like. Um, and I think you learn that by releasing your own stuff. You know? For sure, absolutely. No, yeah. no, all of those things are so mm -hmm. fundamental. So yeah. great that you're taking this on. You're releasing your, your sophomore disc, She Fell From the Sky. It's been described as a journey to indigenous reclamation. How does that reflect your own creative development? Oh, this was a really fun album to do and it was a really different album. So I set out writing this one. The first album was me really working on my voice, just getting my voice out literally because of anxiety was holding it really far back. Um, figuring out who I was as an artist. And so this album was like, okay, how can I develop that even further? Who am I as an artist? Who am I as an indigenous artist? And this story started to emerge as I was writing songs. And once I got to about the third or fourth song, I realized that if I just kind of shuffled things and placed them, there was this beautiful storyline that, that I could hear or see going through it. So I decided to just kind of work with that and ended up with an 11 track album that unfolds, it kind of builds to this chaotic climax at like track six and then it drops into an ambient song. And then it comes out of that in this sort of rebirthing way on the other side um, that, that begins to reimagine the world um, and how it can be rebuilt from the ashes from an indigenous perspective if we go back to how we've always done things. So, I mean, when I wrote this album four years ago, I had no idea that we'd be somewhat living it um, so it feels, 
it feels very timely in that way. Um, I actually thought at first, I wonder if people will get this whole idea of, you know, breakdown before we have to build back up. Um, mm -hmm. Will it be too dark for people? So I'm, I'm very curious. I'm excited to get it out there. It has been delayed because of COVID, like everybody's albums, it seems. But yeah. in the spring is when I'm aiming and it's looking good for that. So we'll see. That's gorgeous. Yeah. And I'm uh, like, what I'm hearing is in the music too. Cause like, I'm, I'm astonished to hear you say you felt your voice was stifled and far removed because that is what I love about the album and your music is, is you're just breaking it all down. Your voice is extraordinary. Thank you. Thank very, you. Very, very, very beautiful. Well, this in particular, this Venus Fest project was so much fun to work on. So, How so? Yeah. You know what? Um, I, I've I've sort of been hesitant to do the live stream because it is stressful as an artist to take on a live stream, and I never feel like the sound is that good. So to be able to sort of step away, I had access to a studio and um, that I was house sitting for. I had a piano, and I was just like, oh, okay, great. I'm going to throw some piano on, which I don't normally do. I'm going to like make the vocals really big. I've never done this song live by myself, so I just did layers of my own voice and then decided to play with some more of the ambient tones which honestly has been my saving grace throughout the pandemic is being able to throw on ambient music and just soothe you know myself so incorporating that so this track actually walks out of my last album and then begins to the last track is the very first track on my new album so it sort of sets this um story yeah in well, motion Great work. It sounds so well conceived and you put a lot of time and effort into its execution on all fronts. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Okay. Hang in there. Yeah. You too. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>